Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and welcome back to episode 3 of Let's Talk Lore, 8 Princes series. Last episode, we talked about how Sima Zhong was able to become the crown prince, despite being mentally challenged. Our discussion revolved around a circle of key players that aided Sima Zhong to eventually become the emperor. But I purposely cut us off when we got to Sima Zhong's wife, Jia Nanfeng. This episode will be entirely devoted to her, as she will become the main antagonist of the Eight Princes Civil War. Now, let's begin once again by looking at who Jia Nanfeng is. Jia Nanfeng was the third daughter of the general Jia Chong and his second wife, Guo Huai. We can't talk about Jia Nanfeng without talking about her parents first. Her father, Jia Chong, was one of Sima Zhao's most trusted generals. His most famous act is that he led the force that killed Emperor Cao Mao. Cao Mao was the penultimate puppet emperor of Wei, and he was bright enough to sense that Sima Zhao was going to usurp the throne one day. So being the hot-tempered 20-year-old that he was, he grabbed a sword and commanded all his eunuchs to march with him out of the palace and toward Sima Zhao's home with the intention of killing Sima Zhao. On his way there, his force was intercepted by none other than Jia Chong, and Jia Chong's men thrust a spear through Cao Mao's heart and ended his reign. So we can see that Jia Chong was a trusted and loyal servant to the Sima clan. Jia Nanfeng's mother was Guo Huai, who was the daughter of an administrator and the second wife of Jia Chong. Jia Chong's first wife was named Li Wan and was exiled because her father took part in a plot to overthrow Sima Shi. Now, these two stories should serve to tell you that the path that Sima Shi and Sima Zhao took to eventually set up Sima Yan to overthrow the Cao clan's kingdom of Wei was not smooth and there were many oppositions along the way. And it took these loyalists like Jia Chong to help them ultimately achieve their throne. Jia Chong's second wife, Guo Huai, was famous for her jealousy. In this family tree, I only listed the four daughters of Jia Chong because these were his only four surviving children. The first two daughters, Jia Bao and Jia Yu, were with his first wife, Li Wan, and his third and fourth daughter, Jia Nanfeng and Jia Wu, were with Guo Huai. Guo Huai also later produced two sons for Jia Chong, but because she suspected that Jia Chong might be cheating on her with their nannies, she executed both nannies, which left both infants to become overwhelmed with sadness and die in infancy. She was also extremely jealous of Jia Chong's first wife, Li Wan, who was eventually pardoned for her father's crime, but Guo Huai forbid Jia Chong to accept her back into the household, despite pleas from Jia Chong's mother, and the two elder daughters who just wanted to have their mother back. Let's go on a little aside here and provide a little teaser for the future. Jia Bao, the oldest daughter of Jia Chong, will eventually marry to Sima Yu. Yes, the same Sima Yu that was adopted by Sima Shi and wronged by Sima Zhao when his older brother Sima Yan took over and became emperor. Sima Yu and Jia Bao will eventually give birth to a son named Sima Jiu, who is everyone's favorite leopard boy in the upcoming Eight Princes DLC. We'll save most of his discussions for the future, but I would just like to note here that he comes from a family where his father was cheated from the throne and that his mother was denied a reunion with her birth mother by her violent and jealous stepmom and stepsisters. This background will be extremely important when Sima Jun grows up and take his part in the Eight Princes Civil War. Now, back to Jia Nanfeng, and how she becomes Sima Zhong's wife in the first place. So we already talked about how in the year 267, the nine-year-old Sima Zhong was named the crown prince. And once he was around 13 years old, Emperor Sima Yan and Empress Yang Yan started the process of looking for a wife for their son so the ruling bloodline can continue. Now, let's not get hung up about the age here, because after kids go through puberty, 
they are deemed capable of marrying and come of age, so it's normal at this time in history. And despite Sima Zhong being well known for his limited mental capacities, there were many court nobles fighting to become in-laws with the emperor. Of the many suitors, two families stood out. On one side, you had Jia Chong, and on the other side, you have Wei Guan. Now, who is Wei Guan? Like Jia Chong, Wei Guan has been a Sima clan loyalist and a general who was tasked with defending the northern borders from nomadic invasions that periodically plagued the kingdom. Aside from his military prowess, Wei Guan was also a famous calligrapher, philosopher, and educator at the time, and was appointed the grand tutor position by Sima Yan to educate and hopefully fix Sima Zhong's mental capacities. So when Sima Yan announced that he was seeking marriage for his son, the crown prince, he actually already had his eyes on Wei Guan's daughter. So in the beginning of the process, Wei Guan was the front runner and the favorite. But Jia Chong had other ideas. When the announcement of seeking marriage for the crown prince arrived, Jia Chong was preoccupied and troubled by a work issue. Words of a Western nomadic evasion had just arrived at the capital, and it seemed that Jia Chong was going to be selected to station his force as a garrison on the fringes of the kingdom. This news devastated Jia Chong, who has enjoyed his luxurious life in the capital and did not want to move his family to the barren Western desert outposts. So he came up with the idea that if he could marry one of his daughters to the crown prince, then as the in-law of the emperor, he would be able to leverage his way out of this assignment. To put his plan into action, he gathered up his valuables and sent them to Empress Yang Yan as a bribe to put their family name into consideration. Now, in the last episode, we talked about how much Sima Yan loved and respected his wife Yang Yan. But when Yang Yan brought up this idea of marrying Sima Zhong to Jia Chong's daughter, Sima Yan was taken aback. And in Jin Shu, or the recorded history of the Jin dynasty, Sima Yan described Jia Chong's daughter as Zhong Du er Shao Zi, Chou er Duan Hei, which translate to jealous and barren, and ugly and short and dark skinned, which he contrasted with Wei Guan's daughter, who he says is kind, fertile, beautiful, tall, and fair skinned. However, like every fight with his wife Yang Yan, Sima Yan was guaranteed to lose. It also didn't help that Wei Guan was not keen on this union. As Sima Zhong's teacher, Wei Guan knew how mentally challenged Sima Zhong was and has publicly asked Sima Yan to consider switching heirs. During one state dinner, Wei Guan walked up to the throne and placed his arm on top of the throne and lamented out loud that this was a great seat and it's a shame that it will go to waste hinting that once Sima Zhong assumes the throne, that the kingdom will decline. So without much interest in the marriage, Wei Guan did nothing to bolster his daughter's case. Yang Yan, on the other hand, nagged at Sima Yan every day and argued that a crafty and shrewd wife like Jia Chong's daughter would be better suited to help their dull and simple-minded son on his arduous path to the throne. So it was decided in the year 272 that Jia Chong's daughter will become Sima Zhong's wife. If you noticed, I have been using the term Jia Chong's daughter rather than Jia Nanfeng, and this is because Jia Chong originally offered Jia Wu, his youngest daughter, who was around Sima Zhong's age and was slightly better looking, to be the future empress. But on the day of the wedding, when the eunuchs came to his home to bring Jia Wu to the palace, they quickly realized that the 12-year-old Jia Wu was so short and small that she disappeared after putting on the wedding attires. So Jia Chong quickly brought out Jia Nanfeng, who was already 15 at the time and two years older than Sima Zhong, as the replacement. So fate would have it that Jia Nanfeng marries into the royal household and becomes the wife of the crown prince Sima Zhong. Like her mother, Jia Nanfeng was extremely cruel and jealous woman, and Sima Zhong was terrified of her. But Jia Nanfeng knew her family and her power depended on Sima Zhong, so she schemed to protect him until he became emperor. Her most famous scheme was carried out with the help of Emperor Sima Yan. As Sima Zhong grew older 
it was harder and harder to ignore the fact that he was mentally challenged, and many court nobles raised concerns that he was unfit to be the crown prince. But Sima Yan wanted to keep Sima Zhuang as the crown prince for various reasons that we have already fully explored in episode two. So one day, Sima Yan gathers up all the high-ranking court officials for lunch, and then asks them to devise a pop quiz for Sima Zhuang. After the officials came up with a pop quiz, he had it delivered to Sima Zhuang's residence, and a few hours later, the quiz returns, and the answers were decent. So he shows off the quiz to all the court officials to say that, "See, my son is improving and will be capable enough to rule." Obviously, Sima Zhuang didn't answer any of the questions, as Jia Nanfeng was the one who set up this entire show, and had scholars waiting at the residence to answer the pop quiz. Then all they had to do is have Sima Zhuang simply copy the answer in his own handwriting before handing the quiz back to Sima Yan. One of the officials at the lunch was none other than Sima Zhuang's teacher and grand tutor Wei Guan, and Wei Guan took one look at the answers and knew it was not from Sima Zhuang. And even though he did not say anything at the time, his facial expressions gave it away. This news eventually made it back to Jia Nanfeng, who now have a new reason to despise Wei Guan, who almost threatened her marriage in the first place. Jia Nanfeng was not just shrewd and scheming. She was also, as Sima Yan once predicted, jealous and barren. Jia Nanfeng had four children with Sima Zhong, but none of them were sons. So every time one of Sima Zhong's concubines would get pregnant, Jia Nanfeng would become enraged out of jealousy. One time, this jealous rage went too far, as she took a military ji or a spear-like weapon and brutally beat one of Sima Zhong's pregnant concubines to death. She also despised Sima Yu, who was the son of Sima Zhong and Lady Xie, but because Lady Xie was Sima Yan's concubine, she was untouchable. But Jia Nanfeng could never get past the fact that she is without a son herself and always hated this child prodigy that was Sima Yu. Now that we have a better understanding of Jia Nanfeng, let's go back and talk about the series of events that will start the actual Eight Princes Civil War. To do this, we have to talk about Yang Jun. If you remember from our last episode, Yang Jun was the leader of the powerful Yang clan and the father of the new empress Yang Zhi. Yang Jun dreamed of becoming the future regent for the mentally challenged Sima Zhong, so that he can become the de facto ruler of the kingdom. His opportunity arrived in the year 290, when Sima Yan fell gravely ill and remained unconscious for a long period of time. During this time, Yang Jun and Yang Zhi. Made moves to replace court officials with those loyal to the Yang clan, and made preparations for Sima Yan's death. However, Sima Yan miraculously recovered just long enough to notice the changes to his court, and he sensed that Yang Jun was not to be trusted. So he wrote out a secret will that asked his uncle Sima Liang to become co-regent with Yang Jun once he passes away. Now, Sima Liang. Is one of the eight princes in the upcoming Total War Three Kingdom Eight Princes DLC, as shown by his in-game portrait here. He was given the title of Ru Nan Wang, or King of Ru Nan, and ruled over the Ru Nan Commandery. Sima Liang was the third son of the famous Sima Yi. If we look at this family tree here, Sima Liang is the younger brother of Sima Shi and Sima Zhao. At the time of Sima Yan's illness. He was the oldest surviving member of the Sima clan, which was probably why Sima Yan picked him as co-regent to safeguard the interests of the Sima clan. At the time, however, Sima Liang, like many of the kings, resided and governed in their given lands, so he was not in the capital during Sima Yan's illness. Sadly, Sima Yan's miraculous recovery was short-lived, and he soon dies at the age of 55. More tragically, the secret will was discovered by Yang Jun and was burned instead. Yang Jun was announced as the sole regent by the now Empress Dowager Yang Zhi and proceeded to take over the government. Because Yang Jun had read the secret will, he was worried that Sima Liang already knew of the co-regent arrangement and would become a threat. So he attempted to summon Sima Liang into the capital for the funeral as a way to assassinate him. However, wise to his tricks, Sima Liang claimed that his old age and illness prevented him from traveling to the capital. 
This only confirmed Yang Jun's suspicion, and military plans were quickly made to lay siege to Sima Liang's Runan commandery. Upon hearing this news, Sima Liang flees to Ye commandery to seek the help of Cao Huan, the last emperor of Wei and the current king of Chen Liu. Now, this military campaign never materialized because while Yang Jun fantasized about Sima Liang as the threat to his regency, an actual threat emerged from his backyard that would put an end to his regency and start the Eight Princes Civil War. To find out who that threat is, come back tomorrow as round one of the Eight Princes Civil War officially kicks off and will unveil the true threat to Yang Jun's dream of ruling as the regent to the idiot emperor Sima Zhong. This concludes episode 3 of the 8 Princes edition of Let's Talk Lore. Hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you haven't done so, please consider subscribing to support the channel and to get notifications when new videos are released. Thank you again for watching, and see you all next time. Bye!